Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Meyer. I'm Editor-in-Chief of RCR Wireless News. Joining me today is Vanja Sobotic, who is the uh, Senior Manager of Solutions Management at Interdigital. Uh, Vanja, thanks so much for joining us today. We, we appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, maybe we'll start off with, uh, for those who don't know much about Interdigital, and if you don't, you haven't been reading RCR Wireless News very much, but uh, if maybe give us, I guess, I guess, a quick overview of, of the company, kind of how you participate in the, uh, in the wireless space. Absolutely, Dan. So Interdigital has been in the wireless space for the last 40 years, um, innovating in technologies such as 2G, 3G, 4G, LT, Wi-Fi, you name it. We have been contributing to various um, standards, and mm -hmm. in fact, we have over 20,000 patents in the space, which we license to various companies such as Nokia, Samsung, Apple, LG, Sony, to name just a few. We actually have five offices, mm -hmm. mostly in North America, but uh, also one um, recently opened in London, UK. Mm -hmm. And we have over 200 engineers that are working on these technologies. Now, we are traditionally known for our patent business, but we do have other units, mm -hmm. um, such as Interdigital Labs, um, Innovation Partners, and Interdigital Solutions. Um, more specifically, Interdigital Solutions is actually the unit that I'm working for. And uh, we have a portfolio of solutions, including bandwidth management, video, machine to machine, just to name a few. And uh, today we'll uh, mention and talk about uh, a little more specifically about Smart Access Manager, which is a product that manages seamless connectivity between cellular and Wi-Fi networks, actually handles uh, offload and other things. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and obviously, like you, like you said, you guys do a lot in the in the patent space. I know a lot of R and D you guys do. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm. I'm sure most people know know about you from from that work. So well, obviously, like, like you mentioned, the, the new stuff you guys are working on. I know you've been working on it for a while. Is kind of in the in the in the Wi-Fi space, offloading space. Uh, I guess what's what's kind of how how do you how do you guys see that space evolving? I know obviously I, I deal a lot with carriers, and that's a very hot topic for a lot of carriers is how they kind of can manage a network access, how they can best utilize their spectrum. Uh, how to best best uh, route traffic, whether it's on the licensed network or on unlicensed network. Uh, how does, I guess, interdigital uh, work in that space, and how do you guys view that space as, as evolving over the next couple of years? Well, that's an excellent question, Dan, because this Wi-Fi offload has been kind of in the news and in the works. It, it, people have been talking about it for probably at least past couple of years. Yes. And this has really started with the proliferation of smartphones and this large increase in bandwidth usage. And even with the deployments of the LTE networks, which promise to kind of provide that bandwidth, mm -hmm. there's still going to be coverage holes. There's still going to be even more bandwidth-hungry applications. So just to give you an example, Netflix has recently launched their Super HD service for their subscribers. Mm -hmm. So there will always be new things that will cause certain bottlenecks in the networks. So operators have been using this Wi-Fi offload to sort of tackle those congestion and network problems. Um, but the way we see it is, you know, there's still issues in terms of how the users discover the networks, how they connect to the networks. Um, the quality of experience on Wi-Fi is still questionable. Uh, the solutions that you have in the market today, um, they're proprietary and mm -hmm. unable to, to scale or, or to evolve. Um, and then operators simply, they want to have more control, right? Rather than having a simple blind Wi-Fi offload, they would rather keep their users on the cellular network so they're using those data plans. Um, and those operators who have invested in Wi-Fi infrastructure, they would like to see it used in a more creative ways rather than just as a kind of a customer retention tool. They would like to generate some new revenues with the Wi-Fi assets, um, implementing things like Wi-Fi roaming and venue services. So with all that said, we see that some kind of more efficient and better solution for Wi-Fi offload is necessary. And this is where Interdigital has created their solution, the Smart Access Manager, which is a device client that manages the seamless connectivity between the cellular and Wi-Fi networks, also provides the quality of assurance for the users, and its standards um, compliance solution. What's even more important, it actually gives operators that control to be able to decide how and when their networks are utilized, and also to improve their revenue use enough for these more creative services such as Wi-Fi roaming and, and venue services. Gotcha. So are you targeting this product then at, right at the carriers or are you looking to go through a third party or how, how are you guys marketing this service to, uh, to the operators? 
Um, we are we are sell, we're looking to sell it to both um, operators direct. Okay. Sometimes we also do it through channel partners. So these are our infrastructure partners that mm -hmm. may be selling it as an end-to-end -end solution on our behalf to to the end operators. Gotcha, gotcha. And obviously, I, I mean, like you said, this is definitely one of those topics where, like you said, carriers have kind of been uh, over the past almost ten years really kind of in and out of the Wi-Fi space because again, it is it is a, a market that they don't control so much. It's unlicensed spectrum. Uh, it's a bit of a wild wild west out there. Uh, and for consumers, uh, you know, they're just looking for the best connection for the most part, and carriers, you know, are looking to try to be most efficient as possible. So uh, that is kind of the trick: is being able to kind of, I guess, bridge that gap between, uh, uh, you know, the 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 the, the capacity there of Wi-Fi and what carriers want when it comes to control of, over the customer as well. So that, that seems to be a bit of a challenge for for what you guys. It looks like you guys are trying to tackle. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in line with that, um, the solution that we have implemented then is um, is compliant to an ANDSF standard. Yep. Which the 3GPP standard specifically target targeted at the cellular operators to yep. kind of give them that control to be able to direct the network selection and application traffic routing. But at the same time, we do have that user perspective in mind in yep. that we don't take control away from the user. Um, they can still select the networks that um, are not necessarily operator networks. Um, we offer other benefits like the improved quality of experience, the power mm -hmm. management, and certain things. So we're certainly, even though our solution is targeted at the mobile operators, we keep the user needs in mind. Yeah, I guess can you talk a bit about the ANDF, ANDSF uh, standard? I know that's kind of a new acronym that's been thrown around a lot, and it seems like it's gaining some traction too. What's, I guess, maybe some background on that and kind of how that's going to help operators uh, handle, the, handle this uh, offloading situation? Sure, absolutely. So ANDSF actually stands for Automatic Network Discovery and Selection Function. Yep. And um, it's an acronym from a 3GPP standard that was designed for cellular operators, specifically in terms of this seamless um, cellular Wi-Fi connectivity. Yep. And um, in a nutshell, the standard defines the network selection as well as the traffic routing um, for cellular operators. Now, the benefits of the NDSF standard are as follows. Well, first, it is targeted at the cellular operator, so it takes into the account both cellular and Wi-Fi networks, unlike the hotspot to Roto, which is specifically targeted to Wi-Fi connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, the second benefit of ANDSF is that it does today what hotspot to Roto promises to do only with some of the future releases that are slotted for you know sometime next year. Um, and because of that, because we design our smart access manager with the operators, cellular operators in mind, we are actually compliant to the ANDSF standard from release 8 to release 11, um, complying to all these functionalities of network selection and traffic routing. But uh, beside us, there are other operators and vendors that have sort of shown the public um, support for ANDSF. So uh, we've seen AT&T, Bell Canada, TELUS, um, Ericsson, Alcatel-Lucent, NSN, all those guys kind of standing behind the ANDSF. So in line with that, we have interoperated with several ANDSF infrastructure partners. Mm -hmm. so our solution is ready for commercial deployment today. Gotcha. So, so, but again, you bring up kind of the hotspot 2.0, which is also, like you said, kind of gaining some attention right now as well. But like you said, that is maybe more coming from the from the Wi-Fi uh, side of things, where a lot of Wi-Fi providers are are looking at that. What you guys are doing with ANDSF is kind of maybe coming more from the from the operator's point of view. Uh, I mean, I, I guess is, is there a, a a conflict there between the two? I mean, do, do you see the two uh, both serving the market, or 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 is there is there a competition between the two and, and kind of getting to the market? Well, you know, then Hotspot Tutorial is just getting some attention as of recently. Yeah. Um, I, I think it really kind of got more press when um, Apple and Samsung decided to include some of the basic Hotspot Tutorial functionality in their devices. Yeah. Um, but really, um, the thing with Hotspot Tutorial is that we're only seeing that basic functionality. Some of the more advanced functionality um, is actually only slotted to come out, you know, maybe this year or next year. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, still on the roadmap. We at Interdigital have actually started implementing some advanced hotspot 2.0 functionality in our client, um, things like you know network selection through hotspot 2.0 parameters rather than the standard SSID, um, and then also some congestion indication parameters. But what we are hearing from the operators is that hotspot 2.0 is more of a 2015 and on deployment time frame. And um, you know the way we see hotspot 2.0, I mean it is a great technology in a sense that um, 
it does for Wi-Fi, it enables Wi-Fi to have that cellular-like experience, right? Uh -huh. In terms of connectivity, in terms of the Wi-Fi roaming, and so on. It also gives that control to the user to be able to say, these are the operators whose policy I want you to use. So those could be cellular operators, like with the ANDSF, but they could also be Wi-Fi operators, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi aggregators, you know, Wi-Fi alliance, like cable Wi-Fi alliance. So mm -hmm. it includes these, all these other players, right? Um, so, so that's what's really great about Hotspot 2.0. But the challenges that remain is, as I was saying, um, some of those advanced features are not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, another challenge is that actually Wi-Fi Broadband Alliance spoke in their November report is that it needs alignment with ANDSF. So we have these two standards that are coexisting that need to somehow align or integrate. So those are still challenges for the industry. But what I think really is kind of the biggest challenge in terms of Hotspot 2.0 is that a lot of operators out there have already deployed this traditional Wi-Fi infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to happen overnight that they're going to you know, upgrade that to the next generation network, such as Hotspot 2.0. Um, so while that is happening, our client is able to handle both the traditional as well as Hotspot 2.0 in the future. So that way, the operators can protect their investment, yeah. do this Wi-Fi control or the Wi-Fi offload today, rather than waiting for the Hotspot 2.0 networks to proliferate wide scale. Gotcha. And, and obviously, it seems like that, that interoperability challenge is, is a big challenge. And like you said, since Wi-Fi offload is still uh, a very evolving market for carriers, it seems like being able to future-proof it or be able to update it as you need it uh, uh, is a pretty important part of, of, of this really evolving going, going forward, too. Absolutely, Dan. Yeah, it is, it is about being able to do something today, but also to, to be future-friendly and protect your investment rather than having to you know, upgrade this once again a you know, couple of years down the line. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That sounds good. Well, well, again, uh, another topic I want to touch on briefly with you too is, is there's been a lot of talk recently about kind of the whole 5G uh, space. I know you guys have talked a little bit about it as well. Uh, this is a market that, for myself, I've always been a little hesitant to talk about because uh, uh, when you're just, whenever you start talking about the G's, you start talking about standards, and there's not really a standard set yet for 5G. But obviously, with 4G coming online in a lot of markets, uh, evolving, you know, in Korea and, and other countries. Uh, it is, I guess, at some point you have to start looking ahead to the next generation, the next update to networks. And I guess from your point of view, obviously, since InterDigital does a lot of R&D work, uh, has a lot of patent work, obviously, I'm sure you guys are working deeply on kind of the next evolution. What do you guys see coming uh, for 5G? I mean, what's, I guess, your general view of, of what 5G means and what it will bring to the market that's uh, the advancement beyond, beyond the 4G standard? Well, you know, this is a great question for InterDigital because, as you said, we are always working on the on the technology sort of way ahead of their time. Yeah. And, you know, with the 5G, uh, it is still kind of unclear where it's really going to go. There are no real established standards yeah. as to, you know, what it's going to include. But what I think it is clear um, is that at this point is that 5G will be something that will take place maybe 2020. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's still probably about 10 years ahead of us. Um, and another aspect is that it's not just going to be about an increased throughput anymore. It's, it's going to be a bit of a paradigm shift. Um, we're going to have to focus on some other um, end, end user uh, improvements. Yeah. And so in line with that, um, InterDigital has been working on this for some couple of years. And some of the topics that we're covering in this realm um, include the millimeter wave um, yeah. that cover the, ba the backhaul and the hotspot, um, also the future wireless internet, to yeah. name a couple of topics. So what we've also done is we have partnered with some of the institutions that are doing innovation on 5G, um, like NYU uh, mm -hmm. Wireless um, Research Center, and then also the University of Surrey in London. And in fact, we have just recently opened that London office um, because there's a lot of focus on the 5G research in Europe. Um, I'm not an expert in this field, yeah, sure. so what I'll say is uh, if you're interested to hear more, our experts will be at the Mobile World Congress and exhibiting on the, on the technologies and advancement that, that we're working on, so you can always come by our booth and, and get more insight. Sure, that makes sense. And obviously, too, I mean, I guess with the Wi-Fi offloading, it kind of ties in a bit with 5G because, like you said, 5G is going to have to encompass more than just a traditional cellular network. It's going to have to encompass small cells, Wi-Fi, like you said, millimeter wave. I mean, there's a lot that's going to be part of, it seems at least, uh, the talk is it's going to be part of, of that 5G standard. So it seems like the work you guys are doing now and the work that other companies are doing now when it comes to Wi-Fi uh, will play a role, you know, directly at some point in, in kind of the 5G standard too. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. And like I said, InterDigital has so many different areas that, that we're working on, whether it's self-organizing networks, whether it's the genius networks, yeah. the small cell underlays, overlays, you know, the back hall, um, and and so on. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. But yeah. uh, you know, definitely there'll be a lot of things going on in InterDigital as far as any kind of advanced technology is concerned. Yeah, well, I'm glad someone out there is working on this technology because it's something I'm not quite ready to handle yet. I need a few more years to deal with 4G still, so, uh, but I've got someone's out there behind the scenes working on 5G, so when it's ready to go, I can d dive into that as well, so that sounds good. Well, well again, Avanja, we definitely appreciate the time and insight today. Thanks so much for the information, and we'll make sure to check back in with InterDigital here going forward. Thanks so much again. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.